Shame on me. I still have time. Okay. So, I recently saw a TikTok, and I'm actually gonna find this person's whole username because I owe them everything. <laughs> this is important to me, so I'm, I need to get my sources together. So, this person's username is Arav Killed It. A A R A V dot killed dot it. Thank you. They said, um, just thinking about how the gay adoption allegory in Mr. Peabody and Sherman flew over everyone's heads. That changed my life. I need to, like, sit comfortably because I need to talk about this, like, casually. That changed my life because I saw that post and it changed the course of my evening because I knew in that moment, I was like, I need to rewatch this movie because... Oh, he is so cute <laughs> and I cried because it was so cute it was so wholesome all right so like oh my gosh oh my god <laughs> okay so 2014's DreamWorks film Mr. Peabody and Sherman is an allegory for gay adoption let's get into it the movie starts and literally the first line like the entry line of the movie is hi the dog mr peabody as a puppy and he's like i never fit in with my peers i always knew i was different that's a gay little dog that is a gay little dog. Be who you are, you gay little dog. Scientist. He didn't fit in. He wasn't like the other dogs. He knew he was different, but he didn't know how. It was so sad. It was this pathetic little dog with glasses. And then he... He becomes the greatest scientists in the world <laughs> because he has to overcompensate because when you're gay and you are fruity and LGBT you have to prove to everybody around you that you are like the best person ever or else you won't be taken seriously it's the same story for literally any minority in any fashion it seems you have to be, like, the most exceptional person on the planet or else you will not be taken seriously or given the time of day. So the dog becomes a gay little scientist who's good at everything and creates, like, time travel and shit. Because he's overcompensating for being a gay dog. And then he, like, <laughs> well into his career, finds this human baby boy and the baby also has glasses which is like adorable so then the little little redhead baby with glasses sherman comes into his life and he has to fight for the right to adopt this human boy and he wins the court case and it's like this big big deal trial of the century some might say and he so he adopts him And the baby's like, Dada. And he's like, don't call me that. <laughs> call me Mr. Peabody. Because he is not the most emotional, you know? Like, like he needs to break down his outer shell. He needs to tap into his inner dad. He's not there yet. So then the kid grows up. And you all know this story. There's this beautiful montage to John Lennon. We hate John Lennon on this channel. So there's this montage of the kid growing up to the beautiful boy, darling boy song. And I have beef with that song because honestly, it's a very sweet song. But I I can't help but think about Julian, his son, who that song is not about. You know, his first son, who did not get a song written about him by his father. Also, John Lennon was an abusive asshole. Oh well, that's unfortunate. Very sweet song though about Sean, darling Sean. Um, there's a montage of the dog and his and his the son, and it's so cute. And I cried because I'm not like 
the, I'm not there mentally. I actually left a few years ago. I'm gonna find a picture of me crying for you, though, just, like, in case you didn't believe me, which... Why would you believe me? I clearly seem like the type of person who would cry over this dog movie. I mean, listen to me speak. Here she is. <laughs> they got... <laughs> yeah, right. And it's a beautiful relationship. But... And this is where it kind of loses me, I'll be honest. I got a bit confused. The kid goes to human school and the human, the other humans whisper and make fun of him because of his gay dog father as an allegory for like how kids with gay parents get like bullied and everyone calls him a dog, which I guess was the equivalent of being called gay. This is where I got, I kind of get lost because then he bites someone <laughs> and I don't know what, like, the gay equivalent to that would be. Like, he said yas. He said slay, miss. Sherman, you can't say slay. You're not slay. You're a boy. Like, I don't know. Uh, that kind of lost me. But anyways. So he bites this little bitch and then, like, principal's called... And the dog goes in to speak to the principal, and he's like, tell me about my exceptional genius son. And instead the principal's like, well, he bit someone, and Mr. Peabody is like, what? He's never done that before. But the principal is a little backhanded a-hole. <laughs> the principal called Child Protective Services because he has to, because the kid's, like, adopted. So this lady in <laughs> onion this onion lady comes to school and she's like fuck you you gay dog and your gay dog human son i'm gonna investigate your home and take away your human son from you you gay gay dog by the way you never should have had the right to raise a child and that's the drama so mr peabody invites over the blonde bitch who got bitten and her parents the same night as the investigation two birds with one stone i don't know um they get in some hijinks the girl and german like time travel and then he has to go save them and then he hypnotizes like her parents which was interesting um the point is save they save the day dramatic sequence really like the most important thing to next pay attention to is the very end of the movie. There's a part where all the, all the characters throughout history and also the city they live in. They, I think New York. Everyone's like, I am a dog. I am a dog too. I am also a dog. Like, in the manner of Spartacus. And that was interesting. That was interesting. I don't really, I didn't really get it in this I don't- I don't know. I feel like the movie should have ended with him calling the guy dad and him being like, yes, son, <laughs> but better written than, than whatever the fuck I just said. You know what I mean, though? I actually- maybe they did say that and I missed it. There was also a joke about Oedipus or Oedipus. I don't know how it's said. I think it's Oedipus. There was a joke about that in this movie and that really caught me off guard. I did not expect to have to remember that story. So that was um, a good refresher, I suppose. Anyways, bye.